Welcome to AFS, Advanced Fiber Sensors, and our video demonstration of electro-optic field scanning within Saline Solution. Today we will be showing you the operation of a non-intrusive mapping system for radio frequency electric fields, along with a specific application to dipole antenna radiation into a saline water reservoir. Here we start off by displaying the complete configuration of an AFS field mapping system while in operation to measure one vector component of the dipole near field pattern. The three essential parts to this system are illustrated in roughly the left, center, and right thirds of the viewing window. On the left is a stack of three critical system instruments. First, the AFS optical mainframe unit, positioned in the middle of the stack, which can be considered to be the heart of the electro-optic measurement system. Second, the lock and amplifier readout instrument on the bottom of the stack. And third, the notebook computer on top of the stack. In the middle of the viewing window is the computer-controlled, motorized, two-dimensional translation stage, while on the right is a liquid reservoir and a dipole antenna. Above the reservoir and antenna is a conical, green-colored mount that is an example of a dielectric arm used to couple the translation stage to a vertically-oriented dielectric stalk supporting the optical fiber and the electro-optic sensor. The radio frequency source for the dipole antenna supplying 10 watts at a frequency of 100 megahertz is not shown in this window. The AFS optical mainframe unit houses the source, control, and detection components for the optical beam. This particular version has a frequency response extending from 1 kilohertz to 5 gigahertz, and it can accommodate a single electric field probe. On the lower part of its front panel are the master power switch, a power indicator light, and a coaxial connector carrying the electrical output from the mainframe to the lock and amplifier. This output contains the radio frequency, amplitude, and phase information obtained from the optical beam as it returns from the electro-optic probe. On the lower right of the front panel is a fiber optic connector which transfers the light beam between the mainframe and the optical fiber supporting the electro-optic sensor. On the upper left of the front panel under the AFS logo is a USB port that is used for communication with the notebook computer during initialization of the probe. On the lock and amplifier, which again is employed as a readout instrument, the numeric display on the left indicates a value that is proportional to the magnitude of the electric field at the existing location of the electro-optic probe. The middle numeric display indicates the phase of this field, while the display on the right shows its frequency. Turning our attention to the two-dimensional translation stage, and in particular, the vertically oriented white stock that is mechanically coupled to the stage using the conical green support arm, one is able to note that the stock is moving. This is the actual scanning of the electric field sensor, which is controlled by the notebook computer to raster scan along the length and width of the dipole antenna. Besides controlling the motion of the translation stage, the notebook computer also performs data acquisition as we will show in detail in a few minutes. The scanning height of the electro-optic probe above the plane of the dipole is approximately one centimeter. The separation consisting of five millimeters of saline and five millimeters of the bottom of the plastic reservoir. Here we have been forced to use a single liquid reservoir because of the limited RF power we had available to drive the dipole. That is, the field signal was too weak with multiple liquid-filled reservoirs to obtain clear field maps given our input power. Finally, it may be of interest to note that this version of our electro-optic probe has been demonstrated to have a minimum spatial resolution of 8 micrometers and an essentially negligible invasiveness to the measured RF device. In this window, we can more clearly see the dipole antenna device under test, or DUT, the water reservoir, and the glass stock that structurally supports the electric field probe as it is raster scanned over a planar region above and parallel to the plane of the dipole. The antenna itself is comprised of two copper film segments separated by a gap and fed through a coaxial cable from underneath its plexiglass substrate. The plastic box that serves as the water reservoir sits just on top of the dipole. The electric field probe employed here is known as a tangential electro-optic probe because it is sensitive to the field that is parallel to the plane of the DUT. Moreover, we have oriented the probe so that it is measuring the field that is parallel to the long dimension of the dipole. As this is the dominant field direction, 
and ultimately the polarization direction radiated by the antenna. In this case, we would expect the peak magnitude of this electric field component to appear in the gap between the branches of the dipole. As we shrink the inset box back to the bottom right corner of the notebook computer window, we reveal that the data acquisition program also contains several control functions that are used to set up the measurement apparatus. For instance, along the right hand side, there is an input box for the lock-in amplifier time constant, which is essentially the amount of time spent extracting each amplitude and phase data point from the probe. Below this are inputs for the incremental distance to be covered between data points in both the X and Y directions, as well as the total number of increments to be covered as the probe scans. Here, we have used a 1.2 millimeter step size for 51 steps in the X direction, and a 0.8 millimeter step size over 26 increments in the Y direction. This resulted in a total scanning window of 6 centimeters by 2 centimeters, with the scanning time being heavily influenced by the speed of the motorized translation stage. Also, above the two-dimensional color field maps are several windows that display the location of the electric field probe tip, both in terms of the number of incremental steps from the origin and its physical distance from the origin. With the inset of the field probe scanning inside the saline bath now expanded, we would like to direct your attention to both the position of the moving probe and the continuously updating magnitude data window to the left of the inset. You should notice that during each pass of the electric field sensor over the antenna, as the sensor travels over the copper films toward the open gap in between the two elements of the dipole, the field magnitude increases, growing to a maximum at a point over the gap. As the sensor moves away from the gap farther and farther over either copper film, the measured field magnitude decreases. This behavior arises because the electric field vector components that are parallel to the sensitive axis of this specific electro-optic probe decrease with distance along the dipole moving away from the gap. With the scan now completed, the field magnitude map allows the user to visualize how strong the radiated electric field is at different positions within the saline bath. Here, the measured E-field component is seen to be strongest, or purple in color, at a location above the middle of the gap. Note that the translation stage has stopped its movement. This happens when the measurement steps, which were initially input to the notebook computer, have been fully incremented to their ending values. Now concentrating on the 2D phase map in the upper center of the computer display, note that there is a large color variation even though the total phase change across the measurement area is less than 70 degrees. To allow the user flexibility here, the data acquisition program has a provision for adjustment of the scale of the property being plotted. Once the scanning has been completed, we demonstrate the ease with which the phase scale may be changed from minus 180 to plus 180 degrees. We observe that the phase of the measured electric field component over the full scanning window now appears to be nearly flat as expected. Finally, with the electric field probe stationary and the data saved on the notebook computer, the measurement system is ready to receive new instructions, for instance, on a different region to be scanned or a modified field map spatial resolution. We thank you for watching this Advanced Fiber Sensors demonstration video and we welcome receiving your questions or having a teleconference to discuss further what you have seen.